Psych Minded Media presents Best Psychology on Film with your host, Dr. Catherine Marshall Woods. Best Psychology on Film is also a book available online where books are sold. Today's featured guest, Matt Crouch. Welcome to Best Psychology on Film. I'm your host, Dr. Catherine Marshall Woods. Lacking a parent in one's life can have a long-term effect on a person. How does one manage feelings when a parent is absent and or unavailable? With us today is Matt Crouch, writer and director of Fatherless, which is a movie that explores the effects of longing for a father figure in one's life. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, I have heard so much about Fatherless and have had the privilege of seeing it. Uh, Why don't we start with allowing you to tell us a little bit about the film? Okay. Um, Yep. Fatherless is the story of a young physicist uh, who's grown up uh, through a difficult childhood. Um, He's had, like you were mentioning, uh, some some difficult situations with um, his his father not really being present in his life in the way that he was necessarily looking for and needing. And as a result, um, he's plagued by a lot of different um, internal turmoil, I think. and the story is about him wanting to correct that. And the way that he's looking to do that is it's a science fiction film and, and he's trying to create time travel. He's trying to actually go back and change the situation. And um, he thinks that that will be the best way to fix uh, this, these emotions that he's struggling with constantly and are defining him. And along the way, he meets up with another character that becomes kind of his mentor named Dr. Albright. And um, so the two of them have these very competing life philosophies and um, the remainder of the story is the two of them trying to coast with each other, work together, find some common ground and uh, hopefully find a way to, uh, to mediate some of those feelings that uh, Logan, the main character, has been struggling with his whole life. This was such a touching story when I watched it. I felt this is a person who I'd want to get to know and I felt a lot of compassion for. You could truly see the longing in this character, the feeling as if almost something was missing because this father figure wasn't in his life. And I was thinking about when I was watching the film, what was your inspiration of creating this type of film? Yeah, um, a lot of the inspiration came from my own life, from my own experience. Um, I grew up, uh, my dad was physically present. Uh, My parents divorced when I was very young, and he, for a lot of my childhood, only lived about a mile away from me. Um, But the emotional availability was not necessarily there. And uh, it was something that I sought throughout my childhood into my young adult years, Um, but it was never really there. Um, to the level that I was looking for. And um, so in a lot of ways, I felt like Logan and I I struggled with a lot of the same feelings that he has, um, that kind of emptiness, the void um, that that really defines the character a lot. And uh, so I was able to really form the character around my own experiences. Um, Once we... Once I spoke to Chad, uh, Chad Eric Smith, who played Logan in the film and and co-produced the film with me, um, once we got to the point of kind of green lighting things and moving forward, the character started to take on some some twists and turns maybe away from um, me personally um, to try to better reflect this whole uh, gigantic demographic in, uh, in America. There are about 20 to 25 million kids any given year who are growing up without their father being consistently involved. So um, trying to, um, you know, touch on all of those different experiences, the character took on some changes, but for the most part, it was based off of my own experiences. Mm -hmm. 
You know, I, when I was watching this film, and now that you mentioned that it was taken from your own experience, it makes me really realize how courageous you were, because it is such a very <laughs> transparent story, really about how raw someone can feel in these moments of, again, feeling the absence of a father. You also highlight, when you were just speaking, that not having a father can take the form of many different ways. Um, and it mm -hmm. sounds like through your collaboration, that's what you kept in mind. Yeah, um, I think really when we, when Chad and I tried to boil down the character a lot and we spent months building the character, uh, but we actually got on set and shot it. But um, when we were trying to boil down the character to its most basic essence, um, it was that idea of this kind of void in his life that he he was looking for something that he didn't have and he filled that with uh, i think a a sense of bitterness um a cynicism um there was this kind of um, dark emotion i guess uh dark emotional setting that kind of turns to and and that colors so much in in his life as a person and how he perceives things um but we talked a lot throughout that process about uh different people's experiences i know chad spoke to a number of other people who are fatherless to try to get in it from a bunch of different angles and then we talked about how those can all kind of come together um i know you said logan as a character is somebody that like you'd like to get to know a little bit and he felt very raw. I always felt really bad <laughs> about Logan because I created this character and then through all of our revisions, we kept adding more and more heartache for him and um, tried to expose him to more of the fatherless situations that we were you know, finding firsthand or reading about or whatever the case be to try to kind of touch on all of these different areas of fatherlessness. Um, so I, I felt like, um, you know, Logan has maybe 30 seconds of kind of happiness at the beginning of the film. And then the rest of the time, it's just raw deal after raw deal. And um, I mean, you can see how uh, that would lead to um, him leaning on so much negativity uh, as he does as a character. Um, but hopefully, I mean, the, the story of the film is to kind of offer up a, an alternative, some other way of looking at things. <laughs> I want to highlight that, um, yes, I say I want to get to know him. I'm also a psychologist. And so sure. the way that I'd want to get to know him is partly for the purpose of wanting to be a part of his healing. Yeah. Because I think you're right. The way um, you the way you describe him is this um, very little ability to access any positive emotion because of all of his negative experiences, and because right. of all those negative experiences, it does leave him quite vulnerable to really just take on a negative perspective regarding what the situation is, um, even at times being very harsh and and um, very critical of even himself and what he can do. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the things that also really touched me about the story is that he uses that negative energy though in a very efficient way. And I'm wondering if you were very thoughtful about that because he seems so motivated and he's using his anger in a positive way. Yeah, and I think for me, again, a lot of this was personal. Um, for me, it wasn't until maybe a year or two before I wrote this uh, this screenplay that I really started to recognize how I could take negative experiences and turn them into kind of fuel um, to want to achieve more and to want to accomplish things and, and get past the obstacles instead of just giving into them. Um, so I think that was something that I was definitely mindful of um, as I was writing the script. Um, but at the same time, he is so focused on just this one area that he thinks is going to fix everything. Um, I know a lot of times 
in my experience, that was um, kind of a pit that you fall into um, when your father's, when you're looking to resolve these emotions, uh, you think that you can find a fix. You think if I just spend more time with him, then the relationship is going to be better. Or, you know, if I just try to like this more than he's going to like me more or whatever the case is. Um, you can get really caught up on cause and effect. Um, if I do this, then this is going to work. And um, I do think that that was a, a big motivator for Logan as well in the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I want to just highlight that is a pit that people can fall in regardless to why they fall into that pit. The idea of feeling that one solution or one event is going to be the cause or reaction of a solution for you is a very yeah. risky one because it's a 50-50 chance. And if the 50 percent goes in the negative way, then it just leads to further hurt and further emotional injury. Hopefully the mm -hmm. idea is that people have an array of options that they can try and then hopefully one of those actually pan out. It lessens the risk um, that's being taken. And then there's also this idea that we can't control other people in our lives that even if we had an array of ideas with a father, the father may not respond because of the things that they have going on or for whatever reason. Right. So when it comes down to human interaction, even though we may put all of this thought um, and contemplation in it, it still may not work out to our benefit and in part because we mm -hmm. cannot actually change other people's behavior. Right, yeah, absolutely. Hear more of this interview at Best Psychology and Film on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, and where podcasts are hosted. Want to make your film psychologically rich? Visit our website at www.psychmindedmedia.com to collaborate. And find more on Instagram at psychmindedmedia. Created with works by...